great walkout song. <laughs> Not what you would normally hear in an MMA event, but nah, still great. Excuse me. Out of Dijski, Poland, top team, 13 and 4 overall. This fight's going to take place at 145 pounds. And that's the featherweight division in mixed martial arts. I don't know how I feel about listening to this music and not seeing somebody get paid. <laughs> Robert, you were saying you, you've been to Poland a few times? Yeah, man. Like, uh, I think probably a total of nine times now. So why is that? For seminars? Yeah, so we have a lot of affiliate schools out there, a lot of good friends. And uh, I think it was the third country I've ever taught a seminar, and I developed a very good relationship with them. And they're very passionate about jiu-jitsu. And I tell people this, people think I'm exaggerating, but I'm not. On average, and I repeat, on average, Poland has better jiu-jitsu than the United States and Brazil. What? Yes, absolutely. People think like, I'm, I'm not exaggerating. Because you go to Brazil, you're going to get average black belts, average, below average blue belts. You get everything, right? Same thing in the U.S. You get guys who are not, they're, they're ranked, but they're not great. And you get guys who are great as well. But you go, you go to Poland, every single blue belt is super tough. All right, let's hang on to that butt. We'll bring you in the next fight. Yoshihiro Koyama, 21, 9, and 2 overall. Fighting out of Paresa Matsudo in Japan. Again, these are featherweights, and in MMA, 145 pounds is featherweight. This has got to be the Japanese version of our Monday Night Football song back home, right? I think so. The fighter's going through the prep point, and now he's entering the Decagon. We're going to send it up to Don Andrews for the official announcement. Introducing first, the man fighting out of the blue corner, standing 5 foot 10 inches tall, 178 centimeters, he weighed in at 146 pounds, 66 kilograms. His record, 13 wins, 4 losses, 7 of those wins coming by way of knockout or TKO, representing CT Show Poland, top team from Poland, please welcome Kamil Lakowski! His opponent across the cage, the man fighting out of the red corner. Standing five foot eight inches tall, 173 centimeters. He weighed in at 145 pounds, 66 kilograms. His record, 21 wins, nine losses, two draws. Representing Paris from Matsudo, here in Japan. Please welcome Yoshihiro Koyama. Your referee in charge is Miru Toyami. Koyama's going to be wearing white tights with a gray band around his waist. He's also got the red gloves, the red tape on his gloves. He's in the red corner. Lepkowski is wearing multicolored white, red, and black tights. 
He's got the blue tape on his wrist. He's in the blue corner. They touch gloves, and off we go with the third fight of the World Series of Fighting Global Championships 2 card. My name is George Garcia, and I'm joined by Brian Garcia and Robert Drysdale. Robert, I wanted to see if you could finish a quick story here because it kind of caught us off guard, but you're saying the Polish fighters have some awesome jujitsu for the most part, huh? You know, what, what it is is that, you know, if you go to Brazil, you're going to get blue belts and black belts that are great, and you're going to get some that have been trained for a long time. Oh, neither. Uh, they've been trained for a long time, and then they get promoted, but, you know, the, the, the spectrum is pretty broad. It's the same in the U.S., whereas in Poland, they have this tough love mentality in the sense where you're not going to get promoted if your level's not there. I don't care how long you've been training. So the end result is you have a lot of young fighters that are very committed, and they don't get promoted very quickly, man. And the level is super high. Like, I've never gone against a blue belt and purple belt in Poland that wasn't really good. Um, so, yeah, they, I mean, every time I go there, they get better and better, man. I used to, The first time I went there, like, you know, like, all oh, these guys are good. But every year I go back, and, man, I got, like, three or four guys there that give me a run for my money. I got to do my <laughs> very, very best to keep up with them. That's awesome to hear. Oh, nice left, left hook by Lepkowski. Definitely got his attention there. Lepkowski's got bad intentions, guys. I think he's starting to find his range. We've seen nice. a lot of Polish fighters. I know a, a Polish fighter uh, nice down there by, Yoshiro. by the name of Joanna Jindracek, who's doing pretty good, huh? Yep, Joanna's awesome. She's got a really good camp, man. Like her coach, uh, Simon, is a very good friend of mine. I've known her for a long time. I actually had the honor to promote him to black belt last year. And, you know, so I have a really good relationship. They have an awesome camp. I'm actually considering, I mean, there's a part of me that wants to go to Poland to do my next camp with them because they have such a good camp. Wow, high praise from Robert Drysdale. That's, and, and now the ironic thing is they find themselves in Las Vegas for uh, some tough tapings. Yeah, it is correct. Yep. You make an appearance on that, Robert? Uh, I'm actually the assistant coach. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh. I'm training with them every day. <laughs> Joanna loading up her team. It doesn't get any better than having Robert Drysdale as a Brazilian jiu-jitsu coach. Props to her. She's real cool, isn't she? She's super cool, man. I and can't believe for as tough, uh, you know, and violent and individual she can be inside the cage. She's like the sweetest she's gal so outside. Sweet, yes. And you know, very humble. Mm -hmm. That's 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 what's surprising. So many people make it all the way to the top and they lose that you know, humility. Like Joanna's the kind of girl. She's easy to coach. She'll listen. She'll learn. And you know, she's always learning as a result. Just past the halfway point of round one, we got Camille Lepkowski from Poland fighting versus Yoshihiro Koyama from Japan. Yeah, I, I can't really tell here what Koyama's trying to do. It seems like he's trying to counter, but he just hasn't been successful at it early on here. Lipkowski pushing the pace, he's landing hard shots, and he's finding his range. It almost seems like it's just a matter of time before he lands that power shot. Ooh, there's a nice big right hand that lands. Koyama doesn't seem phased though. He's still in the center of the decagon. Uh oh, we may have had another poke. Referee Didn't look like the referee it. wanted to, yeah, exactly, get in, in the middle there. And of course, as a fighter, you have to protect yourself at all times. If the referee doesn't see it, you can't just call timeout. Now, I've seen that happen, but that's not the way <laughs> it's supposed to go down. Yeah. Wow, Lukowski missed with a big right. He follows it up, though, with a jab that does land. Koyama still again on phase and marching forward. Yeah, Shihiro wants that shot, but he's got to set it up better. He's just kind of like leaning into the legs, and that's not going to work. And he that meets an uppercut every, se every, se every time he goes yeah, down. Yeah, Camille's definitely timing it. You got to maybe try to get him close to the fence, throw some big left hooks, big right hands. You know, get Camille to put his hands up, and then that shot will be there. Is this a, is this one of the teams you have visited when you've gone to Poland? Oh, big right Ooh. hand. This fight's yeah, over. Yeah. Nice punch by Camille Lepkowski. Powerful. Wow. Well, we just talked about that, right? Every time he shoots in, he takes that yep. big right yep. uppercut. Puts and his head down. Put him down. Koyama's still flat. Look at him. He doesn't know what hit him. They're removing the mouthpiece, and they're slowly going to bring him back. But wow. Let's look at the replay here. Yep. Lukowski, that man, just it. lands the uppercut. You know what? I his would, jaw I would bet money that Camille was working that in his camp. Oh, just kind look of at preparing that. for it. The mouthpiece fell out, didn't it? Big uppercut. Nice follow-up punch there, not necessary. Impeccable timing, though, on that shot. Wow. Mm -hmm. 
That was one of the uppercuts. nicer uppercuts I've seen in a long time. I mean, it was on the money. We were talking earlier, Robert, about a, the sweet spot in, the, in those leg kicks, and I'm telling you, he hit the sweet spot in the jaw. There's one in the jaw. I mean, Camille's got some power, too, man. Let's not, like, he, everything he was throwing was loaded, mm -hmm. and that uppercut was not an exception. I was asking you if this uh, Dishki gym in Poland is one of the ones you visited. No, no, no. Okay. no I, I've seen, I've seen the, the, the logo before, but I've never actually been there. All right, well, as Koyama still recovers, we're going to send it up for an announcement from our announcer, Don Andrews. Jinky school! Ladies and gentlemen, referee Minoru Toyanaga stops this fight. Four minutes, 15 seconds of the first round for your winner by knockout, Camille Lepkowski! Camille Lepkowski landing the big kaboski on Yoshihiro Ko Koyama. Koyama goes to 21, 10, and 2. All right, the fighters touch gloves.